Washington Journal continues. Pete Aldridge, what's the purpose of the commission to, uh, for space exploration? Well, the president announced in uh, January, January 14th, a new vision for space exploration. And he asked, uh, formed a commission that which I chaired to uh, write a report of how to implement that vision for success. And so our report uh, went into uh, the management structure and organizational issues and uh, approaches of how we can make this uh, program uh, successful. Here's a copy of the report uh, that's been made available in it. What would you say is, is the topmost thing that the president could do to advance his purpose and to make this a, 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 a reality? Well, uh, we, uh, we actually identified several areas. One area was uh, this is a national vision, not just a NASA vision and uh, we proposed a organizational structure to manage it in that way but also we uh, pr are proposing a more robust space industry to really get more of the space uh, activities into the hands of the private sector as opposed to just being government operations and we propose some transformation of the organization of NASA. When you say industry, do you mean a tourism industry? Do you mean uh, what other type of industry do you, are you talking about? Uh, an industry that can uh, perform, perform services for NASA, such as delivering a low Earth uh, orbit, uh, payload to low Earth orbit, uh, communication systems and things of that nature. But we also are interested in entrepreneurs who can do things like uh, was demonstrated just a, a day or so ago. What, and, uh, how does this factor in, I guess, when you talk about Spaceship One and the, the private individual who, who flew up into space, how does this factor into the, what the future of NASA could be? That We actually proposed uh, increasing the, the level of prizes that can be awarded to, to private industry for this type of thing. We strongly supported this type of entrepreneurial activity in uh, for our, our industry. In fact, uh, propose that we increase substantially the prize uh, levels for these kinds of things because it does demonstrate technology which can be brought into NASA uh, at, uh, at really little expense to NASA. Would it reduce the workload of NASA if you, in a sense, farmed out these kind of projects to private individuals? Exactly, yes. We could uh, f have NASA focus on the hard, more difficult activities and have the private sector do the more mundane, more operational kinds of things. And, and it would actually uh, allow NASA to focus itself on the, on the things which uh, is, is really difficult to perform. What are the price tags for what the president wants to do with space exploration? Well, he's uh, proposed that we keep the level of fin funding for NASA at roughly the level that it has been historically. It's about seven-tenths of one percent of the federal budget for uh, space exploration, and he's proposed that we keep it about at the same level for the next uh, 20 years. We're going to talk about the policy of space exploration for the remainder of our program, 202-585-3880. If you support President Bush, 202-585-3881. If you support Democrats, and 202-585-3882 if you support others. For this long-term outlook, outlook, where does the space station fall in? It's uh, part of the, uh, the president's vision, but it's focused now on learning how uh, astronauts can live in space for long durations as opposed to microgravity research activities. There's a spacewalk uh, scheduled to take place. What's uh, going to be the purpose of that? Uh, I'm not sure exactly which, which one you're talking about. There's some repairs that need to be done to the space station. Uh, and I think that's what the space walk is supposed to be doing. A joint Russian-United States venture, where does the international community fall into the president's long-term vision? It, it should be part, international participation should be part of the vision. In fact, he calls for it in his statement of the vision. Do you see the role of NASA changing, especially if you decide to, to farm out other work? Will NASA's role be diminished in some way, do you think, uh, maybe by unintended consequence? No, I don't think so. The, uh, in fact, the, the, the space vision that's been laid out by the president is going to be a very complex and difficult one because it, it deals with human exploration as well as robotic exploration and going on beyond Mars uh, to other, other activities. So the, the program is going to be a very complex, difficult system that it's going to have to be f folded together and NASA's attention needs to be directed at that and not again uh, not directed toward a other less uh, less difficult task. You briefly mentioned it but can you specify you call for new air I guess new oversight within NASA how would that break down? Uh, we call for a new oversight which would be a level above NASA which would be a uh, we call it the space exploration steering committee that would report to the White House it would be and, and report to the president. And since it, this is, in fact, 
a national vision, not a NASA vision. It needs to be or orchestrated from a higher level of, uh, uh, than, than just NASA and use the uh, uh, resources that exist in the Department of Defense, Department of Transportation, Department of Energy, the National Science Foundation, all those activities that can contribute to the NASA vision. Uh, have to be directed. So NASA doesn't have to duplicate the efforts of other government agencies. So who would coordinate that effort? It would be a sole person or a team it, of people? It would be a person assi uh, appointed by the president, either the vice president, which uh, had existed in, in prior administrations, or some senior level person uh, that would be directed by the president. What's the national feel for space exploration? The national feel? Uh, is, do, do most Americans feel that it is a worthy cause to pursue? Uh, there's been all kinds of uh, surveys done and most the majority of the Americans support the space program because of the benefits it provides. Uh, uh, we had on our web page, for example, uh, uh, 6,000 inputs into our, our report and the, the input was 7 to 1 in favor of the program. Will this report be found online? Yes, it is. It's on the web page, moontomars.org. We have uh, calls lined up. Delta, Pennsylvania, go ahead. Good morning. I'd like to ask the gentleman if it wouldn't help if we could account for the $2 billion that NASA spent last year that they haven't accounted for. Uh, I'm not familiar with the $2 billion that they haven't accounted for. Uh, the, uh, as far as I know, the, 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 all the NASA funding has been, uh, has been allocated to uh, uh, various projects. Caller, do you have a follow-up? Well, the, my uh, representative from this district uh, informed me of this about two weeks ago, probably. So someone's in error here, aren't they? Thank uh, you. I'm just not familiar with, familiar with the, the topic. San Diego, California. San Diego. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I have two questions. One is where NASA needs to really be more like FAA and the NTSA and uh, do more than just give awards to private industry. We need to get a co-utilization of uh, facilities like the International Space Station, and we need to really aggressively build a private infrastructure that will pull the whole space effort out of this stranglehold that NASA has had on it for many years. And I was hoping the Republican administration would lead the way on that, but I haven't seen really much movement other than your commission. The second question pertains to an area where I think the government needs to be more involved, and that's in an interceptor that could be developed to save the Earth from asteroids, comets, or other space junk that could end life on Earth. Can you uh, answer those two questions, please? Yes. Uh, the first question on the space industry, that was a very strong point in our, in our report, that we think that NASA ought to be nurturing a more robust space industry and give more of the responsibility for space activities to the private sector. Uh, I, I would guess that that would be one of the key points of our report. Uh, the second part of this is that the, the technology that's going to be developed for space exploration, uh, the things that will send humans and robot, robots to Mars, uh, are the technologies that you would need if you were to develop something that would uh, uh, be able to be applied to the deflection of, uh, of, of an asteroid that might be headed toward Earth. So we did say something in our report about this, that this was a, a technology, a technology activities which are clearly applicable to that type of a, a threat. Kenny Bunkport, Maine. Hello. As part of your robust recommendations, uh, what's the chance that an artificial gravity space station would be in the works? Uh, I'm not, not sure that that's part of the vision, but... Uh, some of the activities uh, in, explained in the report are talking about t enabling technologies, and one of the enabling technologies that we uh, discussed was the nuclear propulsion. Uh, this would provide a propulsion system that would be uh, essentially a continuous uh, firing uh, heading toward Mars, and that would give you some degree of, auto, auto, uh, of, of artificial gravity uh, during that process. What's the future of the space shuttle? Space shuttle is planned to be phased out in the year 2010 after the completion of the space station. And after the space shuttle is, will there be a new type of vehicle yes. then? Yes, yes. The plan is that there will be a, uh, a heavy lift launch vehicle. There would also have to be a different human uh, launch vehicle. 
Uh, and, of course, we would be d dependent upon the uh, Russian Soyuz spacecraft for, for a period of time as well. When would there be a launch of this new type of vehicle proposed? Uh, probably in the year 2014, something of that nature, 2013. Huntsville, Alabama. Mr. Aldrich, thank you for your service to our country. Uh, if I understand the Columbia Accident Board correctly, their report, they advocated for stronger internal NASA technical uh, teams and disciplines, and you proposed that the NASA centers could be turned into federally funded research centers. Is there a conflict between those two recommendations, and have you discussed that with Mr. O'Keefe? Uh, there is no conflict between that recommendation, and, and we have discussed this extensively with uh, Mr. O'Keefe. Uh, uh, he's uh, uh, started a process of uh, developing the, uh, the getting, gathering data to uh, look at the various centers and determine what government functions need to be retained and what functions might be uh, transitioned to an F FFRDC, Federally Funded Research and Development Center, concept. Uh, our report believes that this, this would in fact strengthen NASA's ability to, to bring in the skill mixes that are going to be required to fulfill this vision. There's a photo in here. Uh, what are we looking at here on page 30, I guess, of the report? It looks like a moon base of some type? Yeah, I think that's a Martian base. That's what they're proposing to do. Yeah. How, how does that fall into the general plan of what you're proposing? Uh, it's all part of the uh, plan. There would be uh, both robotic missions back to the moon then human missions to the moon in the t period 2015 to 2020, and then there'd be robotic missions to Mars, and then eventually a, a human uh, mission to Mars. Denver, Colorado. Hello. Go ahead, please. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm just wondering, uh, given the, the, the Bush administration's uh, record uh, on reliability concerning matters of fact and evidence, why should American citizens uh, believe that, that Bush could effectively uh, implement uh, this new program? Well, this, this program is really a, a program that's going to take 40 to 50 years, so it's, it's going to have to be sustained through 10 presidential administrations. So I don't, don't necessarily think you could apply it to, the, to, to Bush alone. He laid out the vision, but this is a national vision that's really nonpartisan. This is a program that's going to benefit all Americans. It's going to inspire young people for in science, math, and engineering. It's going to develop technologies that can be applicable to a wide variety of activities other than just space. And, and, and certainly it's, uh, it's a benefit to our economy because of the, uh, the technological spinoffs that's going to occur. Ashton, Maryland. Yes, it sounds to me like you've been talking to Norm Augustine and his proposal on, on swaying money uh, into different technology areas and coming up with the uh, grants review, similar to the grants review, review process that they have at NIH. Is that true? Uh, it's, it's very much related. Uh, in fact, I, I worked with Norm uh, on the, his, his uh, space study back in 1990. Uh, many of the things that he wrote at that time and we wrote at that time are, ref are reflected in our, in our report. They're, they're the same problems that existed then, and uh, they, they still do. But uh, our recommendation was slightly different in the sense that uh, we believe that this kind of, uh, uh, of technology plan is going to ben benefit a wide variety of activities on Earth. Will the science aspect of uh, research still retain w with NASA, or would you farm that kind of work out as well? It would be mostly within NASA, but we would use the, the research uh, activities of other government agencies as part of this national program. The National Science Foundation is doing a lot of work in biomedical research activities that should be applicable here. In looking at vehicles for the future, you mentioned something in here called the X Prize. What is yes. that? It's a prize, uh, $10 million, which has been given, uh, but established for, uh, in fact, the Spaceship One is trying to, to win that prize. The first uh, person, the first a group to send a, a person to 62 miles with actually a pilot and two passengers and do it uh, uh, two flights within two weeks wins the $10 million. But the benefit of that to, uh, to technology is significant because it takes, uh, they've spent a lot more than $10 million to develop that, that, that vehicle and there are 27 teams vying for that prize. And in, does NASA then incorp take the technology and become owner of it and try to incorporate it into what it does? That is, becomes part of the technology base that exists within this, this country that can be applicable to NASA, yes. Louisville, Kentucky. 
Yes. You there? Go ahead. Yes, I'd like to know about um, what what they are doing as far as um, um, all experiments or what have you on um, better fuels and greater speeds, if there is any of that project going on. Yes, there's uh, several technologies. Probably the most dramatic one is the, as I mentioned before, was the nuclear propulsion. Some there's a project Prometheus, which is looking at ion propulsion for long duration spacecraft, and they're, they're looking at uh, at nuclear thermal propulsion, which uh, would be applicable to a Mars mission. Uh, example: uh, a Mars mission would take like 240 days to to reach from Earth to, to, to Mars with a chemical rocket, and it would take something around 60 days for a nuclear rocket, which is an enabling technology for that kind of mission. So it significantly reduces the cost and the amount of payload you ha you have to take. Does federal money go to universities for the to help? spur this yes. research along? Yes, it does. Uh, universities do benefit significantly from the NASA research programs. Youngstown, Ohio. Hi. I'd like to know what, if anything, are they doing with the space junk that's already out there? Well, it's not much you can do about it other than track it to make sure that uh, it doesn't uh, get into an orbit that could uh, impact the, the space station or other satellites that there is an extensive amount of tracking, abil uh, tracking processes that, that's done by the Department of Defense of the uh, space debris, uh, but that's uh, about all you can do. There are some other things in the uh, development of future rockets to mitigate uh, the amount of debris that's uh, produced in, uh, by, by launching things into space. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, yes. How exactly um, do they plan to internationalize uh, this program? What countries um, are they going to bring in, and uh, what would be their role? Well, international participation is clearly a key part of this vision. Uh, the plan is, of course, the development of the architecture, which is ongoing now within, within NASA, of what there are the various pieces of this uh, particular mission and then a determination of what role uh, international partners could play in each one of those pieces. Uh, that discussion is just beginning at this point in time, but uh, they could be involved with either uh, performing robotic missions independently or they could be part of an interdependent group that are developing the major pieces of this, uh, of this space mission. With that in mind, how are China and Japan then working on their uh, space technology and does that spur on the need to, to try to get this plan across? Uh, it, it hasn't. We're not in a race. That's been clear from the president. It's something that we that he believed that we ought to be doing, but uh, we are opening up this mission to international participation from anybody who wants to play, and we'll determine based upon their capability what role they will play in uh, in, in either a robotic mission or or in building parts of the components. Does space travel fall into any of this? It, it eventually space tourism uh, if. Would would fall along somewhere in this, but that's up. That will be up to the uh, uh, the private sector to develop the uh, the capability to do that. That's part of the uh, X Prize is really to encourage that direction. Highland Beach, Florida. Hi, I'm just so upset listening to this gentleman and talking about a Bush administration vision. Well, their vision is to give more of, of America to private industry than they've already given. We're going to invest millions and millions and put it in the pocket of some ex-bureaucrat like Achini who has joined a private company. Maybe Halliburton or Brown and Root has a division going into space. Look, I believe in education. I believe in breaking down boundaries. But let's break some down here on Earth. We don't have medical insurance. We don't have proper education. We don't have a lot of things. What this administration likes doing is pouring money, our money, as public citizens into private corporations. They hate anything that's going to help the ordinary person here on Earth, and they love government-related uh, industries. Look what they did to the Army. We don't even have basic services that you used to be handled by the army. Okay, caller, we'll leave, it, is we'll leave it there. Thank you. Your response? Well, the response is that the, uh, the technology of space benefits people. All the money that we spend on space is spent on Earth. 
And uh, the technology plans that we have in place have benefits that go far beyond just space and, 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 and cancer research and, and many of the things that go on that, uh, that, that the space technology provides American citizens has a multiplying effect. So every dollar we spend in space, we have a three, four, seven times return to the local, to the economy uh, on Earth. And so uh, this program is not just a Bush plan. It's not just a, a plan to spend money in industry. It is a plan by which we will learn because we have the ability to do this. It, we have in our hearts the, the, uh, the desire to explore, but the benefits of the economy and the technology spin-offs on Earth are tremendous. And, and this journey to get into space is worth it for American people. How does this plan take into account finding those future astronauts, those future scientists, those future technicians to work on these missions? Well, part of the, uh, the, the plan, in fact, our, our report talks about increasing the uh, incentives for young people to enter into the pipeline for technology. Young kids love space. And in fact, we had Ray Bradbury on our, uh, on our uh, or, or, or hearing, and we asked him, how do you continue to, how do you emphasize? And he just sa said one statement, says, just ask the kids. They all want to go, and they're the ones who are going to do this. So if we can encourage them to take science and math and, ed and engineering education, we will develop the pipeline that, that for the people that will be able to do this job. Less than 10 minutes left with our guest, Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Hi. Um, I, I have a very... Uh, you're going to be startled by my point of view, I'm sure. I think I'm not too many in this country, but um, I'm sickened by the thought of man going to the moon and destroying it just as we're doing here on this planet. I find a great comfort in being able to gaze upon that beautiful glistening orb up there and the thought of people going up there and just turning it into... It just sickens me, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Well, it's, it's not our intent to go destroy the moon or Mars. Our intent is to learn from, from the, the, the journey, to understand more about our life, where it has been and where it's going to go. And there are a lot of, lot of things to learn on the moon and a lot of things to learn on Mars, and that's the purpose for going. Pete Aldridge is the chairman of the President's Commission on U.S. Space Exploration Policy. He has a B.S. in aeronautical engineering from Texas A&M. He has an M.S. in aeronautical engineering from Georgia Tech, Providence, Rhode Island. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, Mr. Aldridge, I'd like to uh, agree with your point on how, you know, the new technology that needs to be developed would indeed benefit you know, us in general. I think the public uh, tends to forget that a lot of the technology that got us to the moon did not exist when President Kennedy stated that we're going to be on the moon in 10, or in space and on the moon in 10 years. And, you know, the types of computers and certain other things just did not exist, had to be created in order to make the deadlines that President Kennedy set but nobody seems to be willing to talk about that kind of thing. I guess perhaps it was a function of party, maybe. Um, one other thing, um, one of the previous callers uh, was concerned about the money being spent and why we're not spending it here. Perhaps people like her should do a lot of research on the fraud and abuse in the programs that exist in this country right now where the money isn't going. Thank you. I happen to agree with your, uh, your comments. We're, we're only spending about seven-tenths of one percent of the federal budget on, in, in NASA, a very small amount. And uh, a lot of people think we're spending as much as the Department of Defense. We are not. Uh, and these, uh, these technologies, are, 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 I agree, are, are spun off into the, uh, into the private sector and into, our, into all of our lives. Does this plan account for in a sense, downsizing NASA or reorganizing it to make it more efficient? Yes, uh, we make a, a statement about the transition, the transformation of NASA uh, needs to be uh, oriented toward now this new vi vision. Before, NASA didn't have a direction. It was a, uh, uh, we called it the spinning compass. It was uh, without a, a direction of where, where it was supposed to be going. Now the president has given it a very clear-cut vision and direction and NASA's organizational structure now has to be reoriented toward that new direction. Hilo, Hawaii. Yes, 
Good morning, Mr. Aldridge and Mr. Echeverria. This is Mark McNutt yet again. And uh, just a point of history, there was a major spaceport project planned for the South Point, the, the most southern uh, point in the United States geographically here years and years ago, and the Native Hawaiians thwarted it. Uh, and it was uh, the first, uh, one of the first great victories of our sovereignty movement. Uh, the Mauna Kea mountaintop here is considered sacred by Hawaii Nation. It's, it's, it's littered and ridden with many observatories. Uh, on a more personal note, uh, an observer for uh, one of the major uh, um, uh, telescopes is... Uh, is a, is a new friend of mine. Uh, we're in the cast of King Lear at, uh, here uh, next month, uh, the middle three weekends of July. Carl, I'd hate and, to interrupt. Did you have a direct question for our guests? Um, no, just uh, take a clue from Elton John's Rocket Man. Mars is no place to raise your kids. It's cold as AC double hockey sticks. Aloha. Moving on next to Lawrence, Kansas. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment about uh, some of the people that call in. I find it sort of ironic that um, they complain about how this program isn't going to do any good for society, but um, it's ironic that they're talking on a telephone that is technology, and they're seeing this image from their television, which is coming from a satellite in space, coming down to their home, and it's like uh, you're fighting against something that you already love. And whatever NASA does will improve the life for everybody. So I, I, you know, just, I would just say, like, relax and let technology, let the scientists do their job because it makes the, the life of uh, us and everyone else better. Thank you for that comment. Is there a sense where people say, how does this benefit me and why should I support it? Well, there's a lot of, lot of, that, of the, those kinds of comments. Like some people say, well, why, I don't need space. I, I have the, the, uh, the, the weather channel, or I don't need space. I have my direct TV, or I don't need space. I have my GPS receiver. All of these things that we have uh, really are, uh, have been defined as a result of space technology. San Diego, California, good morning. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I, uh, I lost an alumni from my engineering college, University of Colorado, on the Challenger. Uh, she, uh, like I said, she was, a, I lost another alumni on the Columbia. And, like I said, she, two gals. And when they flew the Challenger, with four foot icicles hanging off of it. And the boosters weren't spec but low 32 degrees. You know, you're almost ashamed to be an engineer. McDonald was running around saying, just wait four hours. I'd like to hear your comments on that. Well, it's, it, th those are two uh, tragedies. Uh, they're there are things that happen as a result of the of the space activity. It is it is not a routine operation. Uh, it is clear that uh, there were mistakes made on both of these events. Uh, hopefully, we learn from our mistakes and we move on. But uh, this flying in space is not without risk. Uh, uh, it is something we have to accept. Uh, we we must accept the fact that uh, it will be dangerous, but uh, we must move on. And that's, I think that's what President Reagan said at the Challenger uh, review. I was there. I was actually in astronaut training during the Challenger period. Uh, I understood the risks I was undertaking, and so do all the other astronauts. And uh, it's something that we uh, must accept as part of, a, of this, this program of proceeding. Uh, but it's something uh, that uh, we understand. How does this plan then, saying that, account for manned space flight over robotic space flight? What will take the precedence? Uh, it, it's a mix of both. Uh, there are things ro robots can do that, that humans uh, can't do. Uh, we don't have to carry all the life support systems and so forth. But on the other, other hand, there's, there's things that humans can do that robots can't do, and it's the cognitive at process that goes on in the human mind. That, so the result uh, that we're proposing here and the vision proposes is a mix. 
of mix of robots and human spaceflight. Houston, Texas is next. Uh, if you can make your question concise, uh, we're running a little short on time. Howdy, Pedro. Uh, it, it is horrible, but we still lose people in cars every single day. Uh, I did follow some of the commissions. Uh, uh, I haven't read the findings yet. I like the blue ribbon stuff, but I would uh, I would like to see more like uh, public involvement. You know, sending in money, maybe some kind of lottery where you can get paraphernalia or relics historical where you know something a little bit more significant have, than have to leave it there I apologize uh, what happens with this plan next uh, it's been presented to the White House and to NASA uh, NASA's taking a look at each of the recommendations and have had they have an action plan underway to review the recommendation and determine how it's to be implemented uh, and uh, we're going through the process of hearings before the Congress and if people want to find out more about the work what's the website moon to Mars M O O N. 2TO, Mars, M A R S, dot org. Pete Aldridge, thanks for joining us. Thank you. President Bush is leaving the White House today. He will travel to uh, Pennsylvania. He is going to make uh, remarks about uh, compassion as well as the work of HIV and AIDS. That's a proposal by the White House. Also plans several events. He participates in a ceremony at 4 o'clock this afternoon for 2004 recipients of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And uh, that will take place at 4. Senator Kerry is in San Francisco and San Jose, California today. He attends a fundraising uh, function as well as uh, taking a parts in other events. Uh, coming up, uh, the House of Representatives, they will handle consideration of H.R. 4548. That's the Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 2005. In fact, he calls for it in his statement of the vision. Do you see the role of NASA changing, especially if you decide to, to farm out other work? Will NASA's role be diminished in some way, do you think, uh, maybe by unintended consequence? No, I don't think so. The, uh, in fact, the, the, the space vision that's been laid out by the president is going to be a very complex and difficult one because it, it deals with human exploration as well as robotic exploration and going on beyond Mars uh, to other, other activities. So the, the program is going to be a very complex, difficult, system that it's going to have to be folded together and NASA's attention needs to be directed at that and not again uh, not directed toward a other less uh, less difficult task you briefly mentioned it but can you specify you call for a new air I guess new oversight within NASA how would that break down uh, we call for a new oversight which would be a level above NASA which would be a uh, we call it the space exploration steering committee that would report to the White House it would be and, and report to the president. And since it, this is, in fact, a national vision, not a NASA vision, it needs to be or orchestrated from a higher level of, uh, uh, than, than just NASA and use the uh, uh, resources that exist to perform. What are the price tags for what the president wants to do with space exploration? Well, he's uh, proposed that we keep the level of fin funding for NASA at roughly the level that it has been historically. It's about seven-tenths of one percent of the federal budget for uh, space exploration and he's proposed that we keep it about at the same level for the next uh, 20 years. We're going to talk about the policy of space exploration for the remainder of our program 202-585-3880 if you support President Bush 202-585-3881 if you support Democrats and 202-585-3882 if you support others. For this long-term outlook, outlook where does the space station fall in? It's uh, part of the, uh, the president's vision, but it's focused now on learning how uh, astronauts can live in space for long durations as opposed to microgravity research activities. There's a spacewalk uh, scheduled to take place. What's uh, going to be the purpose of that? Uh, I'm not sure exactly which, which one you're talking about. There's some repairs that need to be done to the space station. Uh, and I think that's what the space walk is supposed to be doing. A joint Russian-United States venture, where does the international community fall into the president's long-term vision? It, it should be part, international participation should be part of the vision. Network of record. Washington Journal continues. Pete Aldridge, what's the purpose of the commission to, uh, for space exploration? Well, the president announced in uh, January, January 14th, a new vision for space exploration. And he asked, uh, formed a commission, that which I chaired, to uh, write a report of how to implement that vision for success. And so our report uh, went into uh, the management structure and organizational issues and uh, approaches of how we can make this uh, program uh, successful. Here's a copy of the report uh, that's been made available in it. What would you say is, is the topmost thing that the president could do to advance his purpose and to make this a, 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 
a reality? Well, we, uh, we actually identified several areas. One area was uh, this is a national vision, not just a NASA vision, and uh, we proposed an organizational structure to manage it in that way. But also we uh, pr are proposing a more robust space industry to really get more of the space uh, activities into the hands of the private sector as opposed to just being government operations. And we propose some transformation of the organization of NASA. When you say industry, do you mean a tourism industry? Do you mean uh, what other? The Department of Defense, Department of Transportation, Department of Energy, the National Science Foundation, all those activities that can contribute to the NASA vision. Uh, have to be directed. So NASA doesn't have to duplicate the efforts of other government agencies. So who would coordinate that effort? It would be a sole person or a team it, of people? It would be a person uh, appointed by the president, either the vice president, which uh, had existed in, in prior administrations, or some senior level person uh, that would be directed by the president. What's the national feel for space exploration? The national feel? Uh, is, do, do most Americans feel that it is a worthy cause to pursue? Uh, there have been all kinds of uh, surveys done and most the majority of the Americans support the space program because of the benefits it provides. Uh, uh, we had on our web page, for example, uh, uh, 6,000 inputs into our, our report and the, the input was 7 to 1 in favor of the program. Will this report be found online? Yes, it is. It's on the web page, moontomars.org. We have uh, calls lined up. Delta, Pennsylvania, go ahead. Good morning. I'd like to ask the gentleman if it wouldn't help if we could account for the two billion dollars that NASA spent last year. That what type of industry do you, are you talking about? Uh, an industry that can uh, perform, perform services for NASA, such as delivering uh, low Earth uh, orbit uh, payload to low Earth orbit, uh, communication systems, and things of that nature. But we also are interested in uh, entrepreneurs who can do things like. Uh, was demonstrated just a day or so ago. What, how does this factor in, I guess, when you talk about Spaceship One and the, the private individual who, who flew up into space, how does this factor into the, what the future of NASA could be? That we actually proposed uh, increasing the, the level of prizes that can be awarded to, to private industry for this type of thing. We strongly supported this type of entrepreneurial activity in, uh, for our, our industry. In fact, uh, proposed that we increase substantially the prize uh, levels for these kinds of things because it does demonstrate technology which can be brought into NASA uh, at, uh, at really little expense to NASA. Would it reduce the workload of NASA if you in a sense farmed out these kind of projects to private individuals? Exactly, yes. We could uh, f have NASA focus on the hard, more difficult activities and have the private sector do the more mundane, more operational kinds of things and, and it would actually uh, allow NASA to focus itself on the, on the things which uh, is, is really difficult.